Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while since I've uh, posted anything, and uh, I apologize, I guess. Uh, you know, life is uh, crazy and you get busy, and I got kids, and so. You know, anyways, whatever. So, <clears throat> I got uh, I got a little like backlog of stuff that uh, you guys should probably uh, hear about in terms of uh, my trip to the dragon. There's a story behind that rotor. No big deal. It's just, and then the sign's pretty cool. Um, anyways, so here I am. It's uh, now September. <laughs> Been that busy, man. Crazy. Um, went to the Dragon uh, during the first week, first 10 days of uh, July, and uh, had a great time. Want to kind of give you a, a brief synopsis of uh, what occurred during that trip and uh, how the Buell performed and uh, basically my experience with it. So, first and foremost, um, the trip getting to Tennessee to meet up with my brother. Um, well, it could have gone a little bit better, to be honest with you. Uh, got to uh, the east side of Texarkana, so on the Arkansas side, and um, DOT decided that they were going to do construction, right? But there wasn't any construction. Just the lane was blocked. Kind of weird, right? Whatever. The lane was definitely blocked. Came to a screeching halt. And at the time, it was like 95 degrees and the relative humidity was, it was high, whatever it was, it was high. And uh, there I am, and uh, sitting in, in traffic, burning alive, basically. Um, it was hot, the bike was hot, you know, it shut off the bike, and um, you know, of course it's gonna heat soak. And traffic was doing that stop, go, stop, go thing every, you know, I don't know, maybe five minutes we'd sit, and for about 10 seconds we'd roll forward. And it was because you know, everybody's trying to get over it and it was a mess. It was a real mess and it took a long time. Uh, I was stuck there for at least an hour. Um, tried to do the white line thing and, and uh, drivers were not being very uh, cool about it at all. And so uh, I couldn't find anywhere to get any cover. You know, there was no shade. It was in the middle of the sun. Um, or middle of the interstate, sorry, and the sunlight, and um, it was pretty rough. And, and I started feeling, you know, the uh, effects of uh, heat. Um, I've been hydrating the entire time and hydrating for days leading up to this. Unfortunately, I didn't have any water on me. I didn't have a camelback or anything like that. Um, so, you know, pardon me, you know, I, my, I had a lapse in my Boy Scout judgment, but, you know, stuff happens. In any case, I got off the road and uh, a nice trucker was willing to uh, give me a bottle of water because I told him, I said, I'm, I'm actually in trouble. I need, I need water like right now. And uh, he uh, gave me some water because there was nothing, there was nothing around. So eventually um, I get down the road and uh, I had to, I had to uh, take a pretty extended break uh, in, um, in a gas station rehydrating, cooling off in the air conditioning, and just resting. Um, after that, um, I was experiencing pretty, pretty serious muscle fatigue, and um, uh, not serious, but you know, I was experiencing greater muscle fatigue and, and uh, uh, dealing with all that. So anyhow, to, to make this long story short, I eventually arrived and uh, and got rested up and then my brother and I rode out to uh, um, North Carolina to Deals Gap uh, about three days later. So we, we hung out in our home or uh, where we grew up in, in Middle Tennessee and, and rode our bikes around and it was a great experience. Um, if you like riding motorcycles, Middle Tennessee is a great place to go riding if you, if you live near that area and you're just getting on a bike or you're just interested in seeing Tennessee. Uh, the Nashville kind of area that whole section is really great and, and heading further to the east. I'm pointing east because east is that way for me. Um, so 
and, and that's not to say that West Tennessee is bad. It's just that there are more hills and more curves in Middle and East Tennessee. Great riding there. Uh, I can't speak for a lot of other states, but I can speak for Tennessee and that, those areas because I know them pretty well. Um, and I've lived in all three parts of Tennessee, just so you know. I do know something about West Tennessee. <laughs> I was there for a while. So, all right, so anyhow, we get to the Dragon, and y'all should know the Dragon was pretty great. It was a good experience. Um, we, we, uh, the first roll through on the Dragon, we took it very easy. We were just getting there. I mean, we, we had to go through the Dragon to get to our uh, motel, the, the resort. And, um, so we were taking it super, super chill, you know, um, going, you know, basically going the speed limit. Um, and we were packed with our, you know, our gear. So it wasn't like we were going to you know, go leaning really hardcore or anything like that. So we chilled, got through it. It, it was surprising how many turns. <laughs> oh my gosh. Crazy. I'll get back to that in a second. So we, we get to the motel, get checked in and, uh, um, that whole, that whole area, of um, the border between Tennessee and North Carolina. My gosh, that whole area is just awesome. If you're a motorcyclist, you don't have to go to the Dragon. You should, but you don't have to because it's all, all awesome, really. It's, it's really good. And they really, that whole area really caters to bikers. I've, you know, it's, there's a lot of biker tours in there. So anyhow, um, great experience, the whole, the whole thing. So the Dragon, um, I will say this about the Dragon, coming back to it, we, we rode it um, th three more times, I think, I can't remember. And, um, you know, we're, we're uh, my brother and I have both been riding bikes for, for quite a while, since we were kids. And it's a very technical road, it really is. It, it, I would say that if you're a new biker, I mean, I'm not gonna dissuade anybody from going on that road. Honestly, I know you'll see comments on YouTube. Oh, I would never, you know, new riders should never go on Dragon. You know, if you go the speed limit, it's no big deal. Really, going the speed limit, no big deal. It's when you step up. It's when you exceed the speed limit and you start taking risks. That's when you can get in trouble as a new rider. If you're a horrible motorcyclist, if you really should not be on a bike, you definitely don't want to go to the Dragon. Like, really. So... Um, and by horrible motorcyclist, I mean non-attentive, you know, you don't practice any technique or anything. So, you know, they're out there. I've seen bikers texting and riding. I mean, that, oh my gosh, blows my freaking mind. How do you even do that? So anyways, um, the, the dragon is really good. I, I will say that, that, uh, there, there are so many turns, it kind of gets tedious. Like if you do the whole thing, some guys go, you know, they go, there's a turnaround. I can't remember. There's an overlook, um, or like a scenic pull out and they'll go there to that point, which is maybe around the halfway mark. I really don't know the name of it. People that go there every year, they, you know, they have it all memorized, but you go, the, a lot of guys would go there and then go back down, go going down toward the North Carolina side to Robbinsville area or toward Robbinsville. Um, and then I assume that maybe a guy's going, you know, doing the uh, Tennessee side, you know, from that overpass or overlook to, the, you know, down to down to the Tennessee side, because it does, you know, you go up and then down on the Dragon. Um, my brother and I did the whole thing, and um, there's a lot of turns. I, I know I keep laughing, but we we would be about I don't know halfway through and we're like, holy crap, you know, it, it actually got a little tedious with all the turns. Um, it was really fun. And then it kind of got like, okay, I'm kind of ready for this to be over. Um, so I, I guess your mileage may vary. Um, it's not a really scenic experience. If you are um, stepping it up, you aren't going to see a whole lot because if you look anywhere else, but at at the next turn and your exit for that turn, you're going to have a, it's not going to be a good experience. Uh, you're going to be, you're probably going to wreck. Honestly, don't, you know, like there's not even time. There's so many turns. There's not even time to look at your gauges on your bike. You can't even tell how fast you're going. So don't ask me how fast I was going. I don't know. 
We were not going as fast as other riders, I can tell you that. We were definitely not going as slow as others. So we were somewhere in the middle. So, um, you know, that's something you, you got to take into uh, to account. Now, let me talk about the other roads that are in that area. So US, one, uh, US 129, or yeah, I think it's 120. Gosh, I just forgot the, the number. Uh, the remainder of the road, known as the Dragon, continues on to a town called Robbinsville, North Carolina. And that section from the Deals Gap Resort and the Dragon, um, which is kind of like a bar kind of thing, uh, across the street from the Deals Gap Resort, um, heading down that, that was fun. It, it's not as technical. Um, it, there's a lot of twisties in the beginning section of it, you know, from the, on the hilly side. And then you go down into a, um, a valley where there's a river and a dam. And, and then, um, you get out on, on a flat and a flat area that's got long sweepers that just follow this, um, river. And honestly, don't remember the, the river. Um, I'll have to look it up and see, but, Anyways, the, uh, um, that was a lot of fun. And we, we did that road a lot out of necessity because there's literally nothing near the resort. There's no grocery store that's like right there. There's no um, um, pharmacy or, or anything like that. Like if you have a headache or something, you, you're going to go down to Robbinsville. That is literally the closest place to get supplies, uh, including drinks and snacks and junk like that there's nothing except robbinsville which is about i think it was 18 miles um and and at first i was like man that sucks in the end i was like oh i like it, it was great because it was a fun ride um so that that little trek going from uh the deals gap resort down to robbinsville that's a fun ride um and um if you go there you'll you'll know what i'm talking about it, it it's great it's a, it's a mix, long sweepers and lots of elevation changes and then more technical uh, switchbacks and hairpins heading up toward um, the Deals Gap Resort. The other one that was awesome um, was the uh, Blue Ridge Parkway. That, that was great. That was really, really fun. All I can say, the biggest, um, the biggest thing about that was the scenery. It was absolutely phenomenal. And, and it was fun. It was fun to ride. It was not very technical. It was just a lot of fun. And the scenery was just, gosh, it was breathtaking. Um, so definitely do the Blue Ridge Parkway on your bike. It's a nice chill out ride and you will like it, trust me. Um, then there was the uh, Moonshiner. That was fun too. That was a lot of fun. Um, we, we took that one uh, it was kind of a there and back road. We, we went, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember where we went now. Uh, it's been a while. Sorry. We went to another little destination and took that road and that was a blast. Um, so do the moonshiner. It's right there. So it, as, as you're at the deals gap resort, the, the road forks, um, and I'm pointing like if you're going down the hill, Robbinsville would be to your right, keep continuing on the dragon, and there, th this T intersection takes you to the Moonshiner. That's also a pretty fun um, road. It's um, a lot of twisties and then some sweepers. Uh, the sweepers are kind of short from what I remember, um, but still, it's, it's a fun road. The funnest, the funnest road is the Chirahala Skyway. Oh yeah, that is a freaking blast. That is a freaking blast that I had so much fun. My brother and I had a heck of a time on that road. You know, and honestly, we, we went one direction on it. It rained the whole time. And that sucked because on top of the rain, the road maintenance guys were mowing and shooting all the grass all over the road. And so it was just like oil, right? So that part sucked. Oh, idiot. But then as we had, we had to go back on the Chirahala to get back to the resort before nightfall and potentially more rain. And um, as we 
uh, crest of the peak, um, just just over the the, uh, um, the peak of the hill, whatever the hill is, um, highest elevation point, we pulled off the road and uh, pulled off all our rain gear because the sun was shining and it was warm and the, the roads were dry. Yep, it got really fun after that. It was a lot of fun, lots of fun. So do the Terra Hollow Parkway. And other bikers that have been there will tell you, yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, uh, that that road's just absolutely a blast. Um, then we went to uh, um, the uh, Cherokee, uh, North Carolina. Sorry, um, trying to think as I'm talking, and I apologize. I don't have a script. Went to uh, Cherokee, South, uh, North Carolina, and um, uh, went and checked out all of that. And um, there's some roads there, just kind of off off roads. You know, fun to ride. I can't tell you what they are, but if you go, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and just that whole area, um, matter of fact, my brother and I, um, took back roads from Nashville all the way out to Deals Gap and just those back roads, which were just, you know, highways were fantastic. Um, and so I'll say in terms of the trek out there, if you're heading from ten the Tennessee side, over don't don't bother with i-40 or any of that garbage do not take the interstate that's a waste of time it was actually the same amount of time if we had gone via interstate to deals gap um it would have been we would have saved maybe 15 minutes literally 15 minutes we took the back roads and absolutely zero regret about doing that that was that was definitely the way to go and, and the back roads are always better for us as bikers anyway but you know you get more chances to stop and stretch your legs um and you know more chances to uh, do this, and that's that's why we like bikes. I'm assuming I'm assuming none of you are just all about going dead dead straight, especially on a Buell or a bike like a Buell. Let's talk about the Buell. This this uh, this video is get, kind of getting long, and on the interstate it sucked. <laughs> it sucked. It, it it performed well, like the engine and everything like that. Um, it, it did it did a fine job it, i was getting close to 50 miles per gallon um no real issues except when um, i got stopped in the traffic it the fuel line did heat soak and i started getting vapor lock that sucked because i had to wait longer for the fuel to call, cool down enough to not be vapor locked anymore yay so you don't want to be in that situation and then um but once, once it got to Tennessee, it was absolutely okay. It was no problem. Um, riding around locally, totally fine. Um, I remember pulling into a bike shop that's uh, kind of close to where I used to live. Um, and uh, people were like, oh, wow, there's a Buell, you know, and just excited to see this Buell. I used to have a Buell, or I knew a guy that had a Buell. And you'll get that. If you own a Buell, people will talk to you about your Buell. People admire them, mostly. Um, but, you know, one guy's like, oh, I bet it burns a lot of oil. No, nope, didn't burn a drop. Didn't burn a drop of oil the whole trip, the entire trip there and back. Um, so in the twisties, the Buell did exactly as you would expect. In fact, um, my brother has a Yamaha MT-10 and um, he was just shocked. He said, are you just like effortlessly, like, is it? does it just tip in? Like, you don't have to, Put your weight into it. I was like, yeah, I, I don't have to think about it. It just wherever I look, the bike will go that way. And um, as a matter of fact, I will say I had to really be cautious about how how far I turned my head because the bike would just <laughs> keep going, and, and you'll end up crossing the line or you know getting too too sharp into a turn. Um, so you have to kind of modulate your your noggin a little bit when you're when you're getting into uh, the twisties on a Buell. Um, but yeah, it is, it, it is truly effortless. The torque was amazing. Um, I, my brother was um, shifting a lot more than me on his MT-10, and that's a torquey bike. Uh, he let me ride that thing, and oh my gosh, that's a great bike. I did a video on that. I'll post it after this, because it's out of order, whatever. Anyways, um, but the Buell did fantastic. Um, it, uh, yeah, I was in third or fourth gear, you know, going up a hill, no, zero effort. Matter of fact, I was kind of, you know, revved up going up 
go up the hill. Fifth gear, most of the time, no issue. Um, and, uh, and then that, that V-twin echo in the valley. Oh yeah, it was nice. <laughs> it sounded so awesome. And my brother kept saying, you look at that bike and it's not supposed to make that sound. It should, it should sound like something else, not, not this Harley sound coming out of it. And that is true. It, it's kind of this oddity motorcycle. So any, anyhow, guys, I, you know, we're now a little bit over 20 minutes on this video and, and, um, I've been talking and rambling and I'm not even sure I'm going to edit this. I'll probably just post it as is whatever, but the, uh, the Buell did great. And, um, yeah, I would say that if you own one, get out there to the Dragon, get in the twisties, enjoy your bike, ride it the way it was meant to be ridden and the conditions that it was meant to be, meant to be ridden. Uh, the XB model platform is absolutely fantastic for, for what, uh, what I was experiencing out there. So until next time, guys, um, peace out and keep it between the ditches.